हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ओदेश अकेडमी फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ न्यू चैप्टर दैट इज अबाउट ह्यूमन वैल्यूज व्हाट आर द ह्यूमन वैल्यूज वी सी सम पीपल वेरी गुड पीपल सम पीपल डूइंग ऑल द गुड थिंग्स फॉर द वर्ल्ड एंड ऑन द अदर साइड वी आल्सो सी सम पीपल हु आर डिस्ट्रॉइंग द वर्ल्ड हु आर डूइंग ऑल द निगेटिव थिंग्स फॉर द वर्ल्ड in the same organizations you will find there are some people who are absolutely honest some people who are dishonest you will also find that this values vary from country to country like in some countries you will find there is a culture of innovation you will find many people get nobel prize over there you will also find that some countries have culture of games they are champions in different games and some countries are not so what are the human values why some people do what they do that is what we are going to learn and that is what is called human values so human values actually decide what our action should be just like when we go to the market and we buy something there is a value for every item in the same way in our own eyes we have different values for different things for example some people will value honesty honor while some people will value money or fame so it depends upon person to person and society to society so values are something which actually help us decide what is more important what is less important what we should do what we should not do so value in ethics denotes the degree of importance of something or an action with the aim of determining what actions are best to do or what way is best to live or to describe the significance of different actions so values basically help us live our life and as is the value of a person so is the life of a person let us now go through some of the definitions of human values and understand what is the true meaning of human values so one definition of human values is human values are important and lasting beliefs or ideals shared by the member of a culture about what is good or bad and desirable or undesirable now every society has a different type of culture for example sports is so popular in the western world in european countries but it is not as popular as far as india is concerned even education for example if you see the way the education takes place in india and the way the education takes place in different countries is very very different in many countries like germany america it is very very prestigious to become a teacher a professor while in india perhaps teaching is not considered to be that high profession you will find indians running after government jobs civil services and you will perhaps believe that civil services is the best career or the government jobs are the best but in many other societies particularly in the western societies the government jobs are not that sought after in some countries the military may be very much sought after in other countries military may not be that sought after so basically there is a culture and according to the culture the society values something and it does not value something and accordingly the human values of that society is framed now let me give you another definition of value which is given by john davy who is an american philosopher and psychologist he said value means primarily to prize or esteem to appraise to estimate it means an act of cherishing something holding it clear and also the act of passing judgment upon the nature and amount of its value as compared to something else now when we are talking about the value the important thing we have to understand is there is nothing in absolute value is always compared to something else something is more valuable something is less valuable and a society or the culture estimate as to what is more valuable what is less valuable and based on that the values of the society and the human values are formed let's take another definition of values which is given by professor r k mukherjee he says values are socially approved desires 
and goals that are internalized through the process of conditioning, learning or socialization and aspiration. So the important thing here is to understand that number one the values are created because of the conditioning. Now we are conditioned to believe that something is better than others and if we are conditioned to believe that government services are the best then we start believing and if the majority of the people start believing then most of the people start running about government services because they believe that once they become a government servant they will be most respected. The learning, we when we grow we learn so many things from the society and from learning we develop our values. We believe that something is good, something is bad, something gives us pleasure, something gives us pain, something gives us joy, something gives us suffering and based on our learning from the life we decide our human values. Socialization. Socialization is also important because it depends upon which society we live. If you are living in a rural society, the value is different. If you are living in an urban society, the value is different. If you are living in a metro city, the value is different. So within each society, there is a different set of values. So socialization is very important. The type of friends we have, the type of job we do, we form our values based on that. And then aspirations, what we want to become, what we want to achieve in life, that also basically decides what the values should be. It is true in the case of individuals and it is also true in the case of the nations or societies. What society want to achieve, whether it want to dominate, whether you want peace, whether it want to uh, rule over other countries, all those factors actually decide the societal value as well. Now when deciding the value or human values, the society plays a very very important role because these values are generally decided by the society. So the human values are basically something which is connected with the society. Human values are associated with the desirability of the action from the societal point of view. That means suppose we do something which helps the society, which makes the society better, then that will be considered of higher value. Let us say for example, if we are speaking truth, there is somebody who speaks truth, then truthness creates trust because if people speak truth, then you can trust that person. And in a society where everybody speaks truth, then there will be a trust within the society and that will be good for the society. And therefore, truth is considered to be a goodness or good value. On the other hand, if you lie, then people will not trust you. And when everybody start lying, nobody will trust each other in the society. And such a society will disintegrate, such a society will collapse and that will be very bad for the society. And therefore, from the societal's point of view, truth is a high value and lying is a low value. And therefore, we decide the value based on the what is beneficial for the society. Another very interesting thing is that the human values are very intimately connected with the ethical values. What is of higher human value is also of higher ethical value. It is not difficult to understand because if something is good for the society, it automatically becomes ethical because the very meaning of ethical is that something should be good for the society or good for the nation and good for everybody. And therefore, what is of higher human value is also of higher ethical value in general. So friends, today we have learned about the importance of human value the definition of human value and its role in the development of a society or a nation. Thank you very much for watching the video. Friends, today we are going to learn about the types of human values. Human values are not something which is like a commodity, where the exact price of a commodity is known. The value depends upon the society, the time, the individual and the situation. So what may be different types of values we will be learning today. So let us first understand about the universal values. 
it has been the attempt of our philosophers saints sages prophets and all wise people to find out some values which can be said to be universal so that everybody in the world can follow those values and we can have a harmonious society they have also discovered some values which are respected all over the world in all societies these may be called universal values we can list these values as equality honesty truthfulness faithfulness gratitude tolerance trust discipline fairness love peace justice compassion these are the values which are respected all over the world but you will find that there are many values which are local in nature that will depend from society to society and indeed you can find it different even in two villages and of course there can be wide variation across the culture and across the countries now these are the local values this has evolved depending upon the situation for example if there is a society where people are dependent upon the agriculture crop it is very much possible that they may not be meat eating population because they are cultivating enough to eat without killing the animal but on the other side if there is a society where the cultivation is very difficult or they are primarily dependent upon the sea foods and all that you will find that meat eating may be very very common these values are evolved from centuries and centuries of human evolution and the purpose of these values is to create a harmonious society and these are based upon the mutual understanding of different members of the society so for example some values which may be local in nature may be like eating habits vegetarian or meat eating alcoholism that also depends upon the society marriage traditions bonding within the family respecting elders that's again a local value and casteism these things are very much localized and some societies just don't follow while for some societies these are very important then there is a third value which is called a situational value so the universal values are there but those values cannot be applied universally now the situational values are those values which depend upon the situation and they are often in contrast with what we call sustainable value of course in the situation we can use the right things also for example in adverse situation or even in ordinary situation we may be speaking truth also but there may be certain situation where lying may be a better alternative or people in some situation tend to do something wrong which is actually considered to be a acceptable thing depending upon the situation for example a banker who is giving a loan he has a target to fulfill what happens that if somebody want loan and even though the banker may be knowing that this fellow may not be able to repay the loan he still he gives the loan because that will help him fulfill the target achieve the target of the company knowing well that the loan may not come back now that may be a situational value because that depends upon the situation but the sustainable value would have been that the banker will decide everything on merit whether it will benefit him or the company or not ultimately he will not give any loan which is not likely to come back so he will look into the interests of the society the employees the company him, himself and then only he will make a decision that can be called to be a sustainable value in the same way for example if you are a tax collector it is quite possible that you make a case of tax evasion against an sc which you may believe that it may not be a very good case but you have again a target to fulfill and in order to achieve those targets you have made the case against the company that is again something which is situational value ideally you should decide everything on merit and should not make such case but in reality people tend to change according to the situation in the same way people use violence and non violence 
people use uh, honesty and dishonesty also depending upon the situation. The fourth set of values can be called as the personal values. There are societal values, but you will find that in every society and indeed in every family, there are different type of values. A brother may be absolutely honest, another brother may be dishonest, even though they are in the same family. So how does that affect? So the values are conditioned by the society and the culture of the society. Nevertheless, our individual values can sometimes be in agreement with the society and sometimes it may be against the society also. So the society may be following casteism for example, but you may say no I don't believe in casteism and you can have your own value. By and large what happens is that the people want to have their individual values, they want to live according to their own ways and the way which will benefit them most. So our personal values basically decide who we are. A person who does not have any personal value is actually not consistent, he is not respected. So if you are having a personal value that you should be honest and you should always speak truth, then irrespective of whether you are going to gain from it or lose from it, you will be speaking truth. And that is the thing which will make you unique and that will give you an identity. The fifth type of values we can say cultural values. Now these cultural values are created on the long process of evolution. They are like agreement between the different members of the society. And everything virtually plays a role on that. Like religion will have a role, the groups will have a role and the all type of you know the synergies will play a role to decide the cultural values. For example, if you are talking about America, they will generally not vote for a president who is an atheist. Now this shows that American people are by and large religious and they believe in God. In the same way, in India for example, you will find that people will go for government jobs. That's again a cultural value in India. So the cultural values are something which is evolved over a period of time. You can argue, but actually that is a fact. But the cultural values are not frozen in time and space. It changes with time. So what was valuable in India, for example, 50 years ago, the same thing is not true today. It was quite possible that 50 years ago, you will find that most of the girls will not study. They will become housewife, they will serve their husband and today the values have changed. So the culture is not frozen in time and space, but still there is a set of value which evolve with the culture and that we can call a cultural value. Then values can also be categorized as positive values and negative values. The positive values are those values which actually help the society and which should be pursued as much as possible. The negative values are those which should be followed as less as possible because they do not benefit the society. Now the examples for positive values are truthfulness, honesty, faithfulness. These are the example of the positive values which we should try to do as much as possible. The examples of negative values are lying, corruption or unfaithfulness. So it means that it may not be possible for you never lie. Sometimes you may have to lie, but try to lie as less as possible and try to be honest as much as possible. So the positive things has to be maximized and the negative things should be minimized. That is the meaning of positive and negative values. Then we can also categorize the values as intrinsic values and extrinsic values. Now the intrinsic values are those which gives you inner satisfaction. If you do something because that makes you happy, that is what is intrinsic value. And extrinsic value is something which is not an intrinsic value. That means you are honored by the society or you are appreciated by outside people and that is what is extrinsic value. But sometimes the intrinsic and extrinsic values are 
interconnected. For example, when you help people, society praises you. So it is an extrinsic value. But at the same time, when you are enjoying or you are liking helping others, then you are internally also feeling very happy. And therefore, in such situation, the intrinsic and extrinsic values are same. But if you are helping just for the sake of honor, even though from inside you are not liking it, then there is a contrast. So intrinsic value and extrinsic value can go together and sometimes they may be opposite to each other. Our intrinsic values are primarily those things which gives you inner happiness while the extrinsic values are such which will give you external recognition. We can also categorize the values into a relative values and absolute values. Now the absolute values means there are values which should not be broken. Those are universal. But at the same time there are some values which are relative in nature and which depends upon the place, time and situation. So the moral values which are absolute in nature, they can be called in absolute values while those which are relative in nature depends upon the other people that can be called relative. For example, if you are in an organization where everybody is cheating or everybody is lying, then comparatively if you are honest, then it is of higher value. But in a society, let us say in another environment where everybody is honest, in that situation perhaps being honest is not of very high value. So if you are performing better than others, then you are of higher relative ethical value. So in a class for example, if suppose the average score is 60% and you tend to score 80%, in that situation your relative value is much much higher even though on the absolute scale you have still score only 80 out of 100. But if the average score is 90 and then if you score 80 percent then you are lower than the average and therefore it is of less relative value. So ultimately whatever we do it also depends upon not only on the absolute observance of the values or laws or ethics but also on the relative observance of the values as compared to the other members of the society. So friends today we have learned about the different type of human values, how we can categorize the different type of human values and we can follow the human value as much as possible and if you have good human values then naturally you will become more and more ethical. Thank you very much for watching the video. We have earlier learned about the meaning of human values. We have also learned about the different types of human values. But the question is from where we get all these human values. Today we are going to learn one of the most important sources of getting these human values and that is our family. We are born in a family and we learn everything from our elders, family members and relatives. And they actually shape our values at the young age when we are not actually capable of even thinking. So let us understand the importance of family first. A South African Anglic cleric and theologian Desmond Tutu once said, you don't choose your family, they are God's gift to you as you are to them. So friends, our family is a gift of God to us. In the same way, we are a gift of God to our family. We have no option in choosing the family and therefore we should feel blessed if our parents, our siblings and our relatives are of having good ethical values because we imbibe these values from them. Another great quote is from Kim who is an American actress. She once said, at the end of the day, life is about being happy being who you are and feel like we are so blessed to have the support system and the best family to really just support each other no matter what we have been going through. So friends, family is the only place where we can expect support irrespective of whether we are winning in life, whether we are losing in life, whether we are going through difficult times or whether we are achieving great things in our life. 
it is a family which gives you the solid support at the time of your need and they also help you celebrate your victories in life and therefore family is the most important thing in your life and family shapes your values so let us understand how the family shapes human values the first is about inspiration when we are young child nothing matters to us more than our parents we are inspired by our father mother and even our elder siblings our grandfathers grandparents our uncles everybody plays a very very important role and particularly the role of parents is very very important if your parents are truthful if your parents are hard working if your parents are honest if your parents speak what they do and do what they speak if they walk their talk there is a very good chances that you will imbibe these values from them and try to become like them and therefore as a parents it is our responsibility to pass on the right values to our children therefore we should not fight among each other if the parents fight among each other that creates a very very negative connotation and there is a very negative implication on the values of the child the parents should not try to compete with each other to win the support of their children i have seen in many families what happens that when mother says something the father try to win the sympathy of the child when the father says something the mother try to win the sympathy of the child it should not be done both parents should be on the same page they must try to look united they must try to cultivate the right value to their children the parents should try to behave like a role model so that the children imitate them and become a good citizen for the country so this is very very important for us that we should not fight with each other we should try to give the best value to our children the second most important way we can cultivate good values to our children is to appreciate whenever they do something good or whenever they achieve something of importance even if they are doing ordinary things then also if we encourage them if we appreciate them then they will be encouraged to do even better things in their life quite often it happens that the parents criticize their children when they fail to achieve good marks in their schools or they fail in any other aspect of their life however when they succeed and achieve good things they fail to appreciate them friends appreciation is very important and it acts like a nectar to our soul if we are appreciated for good things we are encouraged to do good things in our life and this is very much valid for children who are very tender whose hearts are very soft and who are very gullible at the young age so let me share with you a story of edison who is a very famous inventor how a little bit of appreciation from his mother changed his life so what happens that one day thomas edison came home and he has given a paper to his mother now the mother read that paper and then she told her child the following your son is genius this school is too small for him and doesn't have enough good teachers for training him please teach him yourself and then after edison never went to school the mother tutored her and gradually edison became one of the greatest inventor of all times after a couple of years his mother died and one day when he was looking for something in his house he got that piece of paper when he read that piece of paper it was written your son is adult adult means mentally ill we won't let him come to school any more this was the real message which was written on the piece of paper which edition has given to her mother his mother but his mother instead of telling edition that he is mentally retarded or mentally ill encouraged him and that encouragement become the starting point for the genius hood of edition so edison cried for hours and then he wrote in his diary thomas alva edison was an adult child that by a hero mother 
became the genius of the century. So you have seen that how an encouragement from his mother transformed his life. Of course, this story may be a moral story and this story may not be historically validated, but this story is a great inspiration for all of us that we should encourage our child whenever there is a need for it so that the child can give his best. The third important factor which transforms the value of the child is the punishment. Some parents always appreciate the child, they always pamper the child, try to fulfill all his needs and desires. Whenever the child does something wrong, still they don't take it seriously and they don't punish them. Now this is also not a good attitude. The children should know from the beginning what is right and what is wrong. And unless they are punished in some way, when they are doing something wrong, they may continue to do it in their future and they may suffer immensely in their life. So punishment is equally important as the encouragement and as the reward. Now let me tell you another story which comes from Asof Fable which actually tells about the importance of punishment in shaping the values of a child. There was a young man who was caught in a daring act of theft and he has been condemned to be executed for it. His last desire was asked. He said, I want to speak to my mother. Then the desire was granted. His mother was brought to the court and he said, I want to whisper to your ear. Now when he was whispering to his mother's ear, he nearly bit it off and the whole court was horrified at this type of heinous act. Then he was asked to explain why he has done this. Then he said, when I was young, I began with stealing little things and brought them home to mother. My mother instead of rebuking and punishing me, she laughed and said, it will not be noticed. It is because of her that I am here today. So, because he was not punished for doing the wrong thing, a small theft during his childhood, he became such a big thief and ultimately he was to be punished to death. So my friends, it is very important for parents to see that whenever children do something wrong, they should be adequately punished in a different way. You need not to punish them physically, but in some way they should know that they are doing something wrong and that is not going to be tolerated. The fourth important factor which is responsible for shaping the value of the child is love. Friends, love is very, very important and a child needs love more than anyone else. Love is something which flows naturally from parents to the children and from the children to the parents. Love is a natural emotion which creates a bond of trust and nurture the soul of the child. If the children are not given love when they are young and small, they will not turn out to be a good citizens. Their heart should be full of love and that will help them in connecting with different types of people. And therefore, the parents must try to give their love more than any other material thing to them. They must spend time with them, they must listen to their problem, they must solve their problem, they must really love them and give their best and that is going to create a bond of trust between them and then the good values can be nurtured to the child. The fifth important factor is understanding. Many times what happens that parents do not give adequate time to their children to understand them. Sometimes what happens that parents want their children to follow them. Whatever profession they are in, whatever they have done in their young days, they want the children to do the same thing. Everybody is having a different type of aptitude. Everybody is having different type of ability. Now if you expect the children to become like you, then it is likely to be a failure because nobody can become like anybody else. And therefore my friend, it is very important that children should be understood, we should find their talent, we should find their aptitude and we should try to see that they realize their best potential in their life. We must try to encourage them 
doing, where they'll be successful, where they'll be happy, rather than trying to become like you. And for that, what is most important is to understand your children. And if you understand your children, you can shape the right values and right culture in them. And finally, and the most important thing is supporting the children. I have seen many times what happens when the children succeed in their life, the parents encourage them and often take the credit of the success of the children. However, when the children fail, then they criticize them openly, sometime before their own friends. That causes tremendous humiliation to the children. It belittles them. It makes them feel small and the children lose trust with their parents and lose confidence on themselves. It is the responsibility of the parents, it is the responsibility of the family to stand by the children at the time of their lows, at the time of their need. If you don't stand with your children at the time of their need, then don't expect that children are going to respect you and the children are going to follow your commands, your requests. And therefore, it is very important for all of us to see that we stand with our family members, particularly when they are going through the bad phase. And if we support them during their bad times, then they will listen to us when they are going through a good time. And then you can inculcate good values in them. So friends, today we have learned about the importance of family for inculcating the right values in our children. It is our duty to give the best values to our children so that they can become the most responsible, useful and productive manpower and good human beings for the future generation. So I hope that you have got the point, you have understood the importance of family and please take the test after this video. Thank you very much for watching this lecture. Thank you very much. Friends, we are learning about the different factors which shape human values. We have earlier learned about the role of the family in shaping human values. Today we are going to learn about the role of society in shaping the human values. Friends, our saints have said that life is Anubhav Dhara or a string of experiences or a series of experiences. Every moment we are experiencing a new life just like a stream of water of river is experiencing a new place every single moment. When this experience is good, we feel happy and when this experience is bad, we feel unhappy. And the person who is having more good experiences in his life is a happier person and a person who is having more negative experiences in life is an unhappy person. So this experience can be said to be a unit of life, like a brick which makes a big structure or a big building. In the same way, this is small, small experiences make our life. So our experience depends upon our interaction with our family members, with our society, with the colleagues in the organization. And that is where the role of society becomes very, very important. Because we live in a society. A man is a social animal. And our experiences, whether they are good or bad, depends upon how we relate with the society. Society is very, very important for us. We work for the society. We want to have respect in the society. We want to have honor in the society. And that is the reason that we try to mold ourselves as part of the society. Society is like an extension of the family. It's a larger family in which we live. We celebrate many festivals together. We share common values. And we try to see that we fit into the society. Often, society punishes those people who actually deviate from the values of the society. It may not be always good, but many times 
it's really a good thing because under the pressure of the society, many people do the right things in their life. Society sometimes boycott the people who break the laws of the society. The ethics and values and the morals are often shaped by the requirement of the society. So the society expects different things from the people depending upon the requirement and we all try to get the approval of the society so that we can have a good life in our society. So society plays a very very important role in shaping our moral values and our human values. We learn many positive values from the society. For example, in every society, marriage is considered to be a sacred institution and the husband and wife are expected to be faithful to each other. If you are unfaithful, society does not like it, society does not approve it and it is for this reason that we don't want to break the mold of the society, we don't want to become infamous or disliked by the society and that put many pressure on us to remain faithful with our partner. Family traditions, a lot of family traditions come from the society. Our parents have learned those traditions from their parents and their parents have learned from their parents and so on. And so we follow those traditions, those family traditions, those social traditions, respect to elders. In a society where elders are respected, everybody respect their elders. Charity is another value which comes from society. There are many societies which give respect to the people who give charity. And in those societies, charity is encouraged and more and more people give charity to the poor people. Service to the poor and needy. This is another very important value where the society plays an important role. Even though this may be provided in the religion, but unless society values those people who serve the members of the society, it cannot be encouraged and such type of values cannot be inculcated in many members of the society. Honesty. You must have seen that there are some countries which are very, very honest, some countries which are very corrupt. Why people change when they change the society, they change the country? It is because in a country where everybody is honest, if you try to be corrupt or if you follow corrupt means, you will feel a social stigma, the society will discard you. And that is the reason that people follow honest values in such society. So the value of honesty, integrity, all that also comes from the society. Excellence. There are many societies where the excellence is worshipped. The people who achieve great things in their life, the big entrepreneur, the innovators, the great sportsmen, all these people are put at a very high esteem. And these are the societies where we get excellent people and they create excellent things and outstanding things in their society. In the same way, the ethics and moral, we learn from the society. If the society is ethical, we will be naturally ethical. If the society is unethical, we will become naturally unethical. It's not that every member in the society which is ethical will become ethical, but the more ethical is the society, the more chances its member have to become ethical. But the society does not teach only the good values. Society also forces sometimes negative values or bad morals. For example, the casteism, the communal feeling and the racism is also creation of the society. Casteism is not a creation of an individual. If you are in certain countries, you might not have heard this name. But if you are born in a country like India, this is a very, very important factor. This also comes from society. Crime and corruption, again, comes from society. There are many societies in India, there are many states in India where crime is more common. 
where corruption is more prevalent because the society does not reprimand, boycott, punish those who are corrupt. Disparity. If you are closing your eyes, when you see a poor person starving or injustice being done, then that is also a creation of the society. Because society does not respect those people who work for the equality of the people. Mediocrity. There are certain societies which are having crab mentality. They pull down those people who try to become excellent. And such society become a mediocre society because there is no respect for excellence. So this is also a creation of the society. Individualism. This is another negative value which often society cultivate. People don't care about other people. They are only interested in themselves. Selfishness. That is also sometimes a creation of the society. Violence. You must have seen that there are societies which are very violent. Because they like those people, they worship those people who are violent and they ridicule those people who are non-violent and such societies promote violence. In the same way, many evils like smoking and alcoholism is also created by the society. A society where such things are valued or not punished legally or morally, then more and more people become alcoholic and more and more people smoke. But if society decides to punish those people by making suitable law and discourage such people, then the society can transform. Immoral practices is also something which is due to society. There are many, many societies in, in this world where immoral practices like extramarital affairs, premarital affairs, all those things are very, very common. It is again a creation of the society. So friends, society plays very, very important role in shaping the human values. So let us learn how society can contribute to shape the good human values in people. Society should honor the law-abiding people. This is very important. If the society does not honor or rather ridicule those people who follow the law, then how can we expect the people to follow the law? They must honor the people who follow the law. At the same time, they should boycott or punish those people who are corrupt or they engage in criminal activity. In our country, many times we see that the corrupt officers, corrupt politicians get the approval of the society. They win elections and they are respected in the society. In the same way, you will find many criminals who are accused of murders, rape, they win election. So unless the society decides to punish them, such type of evil values, negative values cannot be get rid of. Promoting excellence, a good society is one where the excellence is promoted. Anybody, irrespective of the caste, creed, gender, anybody who does excellence work should be appreciated by everybody. Everybody should take pride of the people who are doing excellent work. That will promote excellence and that will lift the level of the society. Nurturing humanity, this is also the responsibility of the society. A society is one where everybody is given respect. A society is one which treats the poor and rich, everybody based on their human qualities rather than the money or the power which they possess. If the society is such which values human values, then you will find people becoming more and more human, more and more good. Society is one we should condemn the violence. The people who try to solve the problem by violence are somebody who should actually be condemned. Because if everybody engage in violence, there will be total cues in the society. Society cannot sustain. People should be rather follow the law and let the law take their own course rather than taking the law in their own hand and punish the people. So the society, a good society is one where people don't take the law in their own hand and those who break the law are actually condemned by the society. A good society is also one which help us develop tolerance. See, in every society there are people of different values. Even within the family you will find that the values of man and woman, 
mother and father, children, all are different. And the more diverse is the society, more different type of values coexist in the society. If you start thinking that only what you know and what you think is right is right, then the society cannot prosper. A good society is one where there is a place for all types of values. Just like there are so many colors in the spectrum, the different values of the society makes the society more rich, more beautiful and more prosperous. This is also the responsibility of the society to develop such values of tolerance in every member of the society. A good society is also one which imbibe all good values from every culture and tradition. There was a time when every country was different from others because we did not know what other people are doing. But today, through internet, through intermingling of different cultures and traditions, through films, we know different type of society. And there are good values in every society. If we imbibe the good values of every society, we can make our country great. So instead of condemning something which is foreign, just because it is foreign, we should try to get the good values of every society and make our society great. And if we do that, then we can definitely create a very great society. Then finally, the society should try to make some festivals, some celebrations where every member of the society can join and enjoy. A good society actually celebrate the festivals together. When different people are celebrating different festivals, that means there is no bonding in the people. But when the people celebrate festivals together, they are emotionally connected with each other and they find a great bonding among themselves. And this is also a good society can develop and a good society can cultivate these values in its member. So friends, today we have learned about the different type of values which can be cultivated by the society. A good society is one which cultivate the positive values in the members and discourage the members behaving in the erratic manner or doing the negative things in their life. If all the good values are cultivated in all the members of the society, then the society or the country become a great country and nobody can stop the development of such society. Thank you very much for watching the video. Friends, we are learning about the human values and its role in building the ethics and moral of a society and also the individual. We have earlier learned about the meaning of human values, the types of human values. We have also learned about the importance of family and the society in shaping the human values. And today we are going to learn about the importance of educational institutions in shaping the human values. How educational institutions starting from our schools and colleges and universities can impart the human values to the citizens, to the students and that is something what we are going to learn today. So let us first understand the importance of educational institutions. When we are barely three to four years old, we get admission into schools. In schools, we meet the children of different types of social culture. We also meet the teachers who are very powerful and who are our role models because whatever we see in them, we try to become like them. Just like our parents are the role model at our home, the teachers often become the role model for the schools. So the teachers are the greatest source of inspiration for us and we learn a lot of moral and ethical values from our teachers. If the teachers don't have those moral values, it is impossible for us to imbibe good moral values in ourselves. Now I'm going to narrate a story from the life of Mahatma Gandhi, which shows the role of teacher in imparting good human values. When Mahatma Gandhi was young and he was a school going children, once the inspector of his school, Mr. Gillies, he came to the school for inspection. He wanted to know how much the teachers are imparting education to the students. 
so what happened that he read out five english words and asked the children to write those words in english mahatma gandhi could write four words very correctly but he could not write the fifth word which was cattle so the teacher who was standing just behind the inspector of school has given the hint to gandhi that he should copy from the neighbor's slate however mahatma gandhi who was then known as mohandas karamchand gandhi he refused to copy from the neighbor's slate as a result what happened that everybody was able to write all the five words correctly but gandhi ji could not write all five words correctly and one word was wrong so when the inspector of school has gone the teacher shouted at gandhi ji he said i told you to copy from your neighbor couldn't you do even that much can't you copy even correctly and everybody in the class laughed out at this however gandhi ji got the good values from his family particularly his mother and he knew that cheating is wrong and therefore he did not copy and he did not followed the instruction of the teacher but imagine that the role of the teacher in this case the teacher was asking the student to do an immoral and illegal act that is to copy from the neighbor's slate and if that is the type of teacher we have in the schools what type of values we can expect the children to imbibe and therefore unless we have good quality of teachers who themselves are following the right moral values we cannot expect the students to learn the right moral values and build a moral society so let us understand what is the type of values which the educational institution should inculcate in children the first important value which the teachers should inculcate in the children is accountability we should teach the students that they are accountable for their action they should not develop the habit of blaming other people whether it is their parents whether it is social background whether the economic background of the parents whether the schools or friends or anything else everybody should be taught that you are accountable for your own action don't develop the habit of blaming other people and finding a scapegoat if we can give accountability if we can teach accountability to the children that's going to help them tremendously when they will grow in their life the second important thing is the character and the integrity actually there is no meaning of these words unless you practice it even if you know everything what is the meaning of character and what is the meaning of integrity but the real test is the behavior and particularly in the difficult situation nowadays there is a lot of emphasis on image but image is not character personality is not character character is something which is much deep inside and the same way integrity the teacher should be the role model they should themselves have great character and integrity because character and integrity is best taught to the students not by words but by the actions and behavior and that is something which the teacher should teach in their children the third important value which the educational institution should teach to their children is cooperation the children should learn to cooperate with each other rather than competing with each other all the time the modern society teaches the students to stand first in the class to always compete with other people and they unfortunately learn that success means winning and defeating others and this is a very very wrong attitude because in any class there can be only one topper or only a few winners that means rest of the people are losers that is not the right way the students should be taught to help each other 
because whenever you will join an organization or even get married and have a family the most important thing is cooperation unless there is a cooperation within the family within the society within the organization unless you are able to work as a team you will not be able to achieve great things in our life and therefore cooperation is very very important the fourth important thing which the educational institution should teach is appreciation it is very commonly seen that the children develop the habit of criticizing everything which is not of their liking they should develop the habit of appreciating good things because when we appreciate good things we try to imbibe these good things they should appreciate good things they should appreciate good people because that is the only way we can develop these qualities in ourselves and do great things in our life then finally my friend the important thing is discipline discipline is very very important and it is the responsibility of the educational institution to impart discipline to the children in the modern world there is a craze for instant coffee instant food all these things give you instant gratification but all these things are harmful to us we should have discipline we should have control over senses our mind and we should be able to do the things which are good for us rather than those which are pleasurable which gives you instant gratification so all the things which provide you instant gratification often causes long time harm to you and it is only through discipline that we can control our senses control our mind and do something which is good for us and good for the society in the long term and therefore the value of discipline should be taught to the students at the very tender age they should come on time they should complete their work on time they should maintain silence in the class and all these things if they are taught in the class then they will turn out to be a great citizen in the future let us now discuss about the methodologies of teaching the moral values to the children the first is the experience sharing with good moral stories the children are young but the teachers are having sufficient experience of life they must share with the children their own experiences and the experiences of the people who are moral and honest because most of the time the media and the other people talk about the negative people only the bad people only and the children get an impression that the world is full of bad people and the good people have no chance of survival this myth can be broken only if the teachers share the stories of the people who are moral who have characters so that their students are motivated to become like them the second is the case study method there should be some case studies where it should be shown that honesty pays dishonesty does not pay such type of case studies are in plenty in our society every day we see bad people going to jail and facing the punishment it should not be any difficulty that we can have such case studies which can be taught to the student so that they can develop faith in being good the third important thing is games the teacher should try to develop some games where there is a spirit of cooperation where the student cooperate with each other to win and that will help them to develop the spirit of cooperation and understand each person's strength and weaknesses in much better fashion because in a game what we do is that we consolidate the strength and try to minimize the weakness and that is what is very useful in the real life they should develop the spirit of rational inquiry and self discovery this is very very important the teachers must develop in the students logical reasoning they should question everything they should not follow something just because it is traditional just because it is written in the books they should question all the myths and try to gather the truth from the logical and rational thinking the class is a place where the students can be trained to focus on the lecture 
and they should develop the habit of focusing on the lecture listening to the teachers because listening is a very very important art and children should cultivate from the beginning it is only by listening we understand other people and it is only by listening we can learn from other people and therefore this habit can be cultivated in them from the very young age the students should also be told to develop the reflective learning and good interpersonal skills because in the world we cannot survive unless we have a good interpersonal skill we should be able to communicate with different types of people with different gender and we should be able to understand them fully and school is a place or a college is a place where such type of behavior such type of skills can be developed into them and this will help them in building their moral character the teacher should themselves have the highest level of behavior and character so that they can inspire the students to become like them if they are themselves coming late in the class if they are themselves criticizing the society and their principal and the other teachers how do we expect the students to learn good things in life so the teacher should from their own behavior teach the great things and the good values in the students the teacher should promote the healthy discussion between the students who belong to different type of cultures who come from different backgrounds so that the students can develop the skill of understanding different point of views and different type of people in their life the teacher must ensure that students develop habit of respecting other people rather than criticizing other people because we have an habit that anybody who is not like us is wrong and this is a very very bad habit if somebody is different let us understand why he is different and if we can understand the value of the differences and we can imbibe those differences in us or at least we can appreciate those differences then we can become better citizens and better human beings we should develop in the students the habit of introspection and work for their own self this is important because most of the people don't introspect they don't know what are their strength and what are their weakness and unless we know our strength and our weakness we cannot achieve great things in our life the teaching is useful but only to an extent ultimately every human being is different and every human being must have the habit and the skill to know themselves by introspection and only by introspection we can improve ourselves and become a better person so friends today we have learned about the role educational institutions can play in developing human values in the students and the people and this is a very very important role as a teacher as a educational institution who can play for building a great society and a great country thank you very much for watching the video Thank you.